Iran's nuclear program is in the spotlight as the International Atomic Energy convenes, uh, Energy Agency convenes in Vienna today. Tehran struck a temporary deal with world powers last year to limit uranium enrichment in Iran. And they're now working on a permanent deal. The IAEA, for its part, is reviewing progress by Iran. The organization has said that uh, substantive progress has been made. Let's discuss this with my guest today, Thierry Coville, who's a researcher at IRIS, an international, research, uh, international relations research institute here uh, in France. Mr. Coville, the, the, the signals coming out of the IAEA are pretty positive, I, I might say for the first time in years. Yes, but it's not a surprise uh, if you were referring to the agreement in Geneva in November 2013. Obviously, Iran is following you know, what has been agreed uh, for at, at this time. and uh, That hasn't always been the case in the past, that Iran yes, follows what Yes, that agreed. was uh, the agreement in Geneva was a breakthrough. Yes, for the, It seems that some confidence is uh, going on, is appearing between Iran and the rest of the world. Yes. Uh, are you uh, confident that uh, Iran and world powers are moving towards a, a permanent deal? Because yes, this one yes will last no. only yes, for six months. Yes and no. Uh, yes, in a sense that uh, obviously uh, Iran uh, wants to make a deal. I think they want to reach a deal. What is a very important issue is the, the supreme leader in Iran, obviously he, he wants a deal. He's for renewing relations with the U.S., he's for normalizing Iran with the rest of the world. On the other he doesn't hand, always sound like it, by the way. Like he wants yes, to no, deal. Th that's why uh, this, again, this uh, turnaround of Iranian foreign policy uh, has some historical uh, significance. That's true. And on the other hand, obviously, the U.S. Uh, and the international community, they want to deal. No, in the sense that you, we are reaching really what is very difficult is to, to have a permanent deal on the nuclear issue. What I meant earlier was that uh, the Supreme Leader, even now, uh, doesn't always sound like he wants a deal in some of the statements he's making. Both in Iran and the United States, you have some opponents to this, what is going on. So obviously, you have strong opponents in, the, in Iran, and the Supreme Leader, he has to take care of the political environment, so he, he, he makes signals to his opponents that, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's not, you know, we are not becoming friends with the U.S., but we want to reach a deal with them. And tell us more about the political, uh, political environment in Iran, because, of course, any uh, international negotiation also has to take into account what the politicians are saying to their... Uh, to their own populations, the, the domestic uh, yes. political landscape. Uh, is the situation in Iran, uh, does it allow for a deal at the moment? Yes, in a sense that uh, obviously the, the movement that represents Rouhani, I think he has the majority of uh, the, the support of the population. What is at stake is that, uh, you know, radical conservatives, which are against a deal, which are against... Uh, I mean, a deal in, in the way when he wants it, are still very powerful in political institutions like the Iranian parliament or other institutions. And they try to do anything they can to stop this normalization of Iranian foreign policy. But what is very important is the Supreme Leader, for the time being, has said, no, we, we want to go on negotiating with the U.S. We know broadly what, uh, what a permanent deal might look like. The, the, the Iran would decrease enrichment uh, to a certain level. Right now it's enriching uranium at 5% instead of 20% um, uh, in exchange for lifting economic sanctions. As a researcher, as a specialist on this issue, what are the nitty gritties that y you're looking for? What do you think here are the sticking points? I think, you know, the, and the framework you are talking about, you know, Iran, in a sense, Iran was ready to accept it for on, on some country for years. So I don't think that the te technical issues, which are important, are really what is at stake. What I think that more significant is, I told you, opponents inside the U.S. <laughs> we want, for example, new sanctions, which would, you know, there would be no deal, absolutely, if there were no new sanctions uh, inside Iran. Uh, you have also outside these two countries, like uh, countries like Israel, Saudi, Ar Saudi Arabia. All these opponents, obviously, they do not any deal, and they are going to seize any you know, opportunity to, to, you know, to to make this deal uh, uh, not hap not to happen. Uh, what are you, what are Iran's red lines uh, going into the, these negotiations? No, obviously, the the what they call it the right to enrich uranium is what they will never back up on it. I mean, it, it's obviously the, their red line. And uh, so that's why they, they put so much significance. They, they, they want to show that by this deal, 
the, the West has recognized what they call the official right of Iran to enrich uranium. So they're looking to keep their, their ability to enrich uranium for peaceful civilian purposes. That's it, yes. Uh, Thierry Coville, thank you very, uh, very much for joining us here on France 24, a researcher uh, at IRIS, a specialist on Iran. Thanks a lot. And let's move on now to uh, sports news. Let's get you all the latest results, starting with football and the latest results from the French Championship, Ligue 1. In France's Ligue 1, Paris Saint-Germain beat Marseille to go eight points clear of Monaco at the top. Lille beat Ajaxia 3-2 in Corsica to go back to third ahead of Saint-Étienne, who beat Monaco on Saturday. Marseille stayed fifth, 21 